our sins. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have offended you and for which I justly deserve your punishment. But I am sorry for them, repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercy. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. God is merciful and gracious, and he grants forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I therefore announce to you the full and free pardon of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our hymn of praise today is going to be at one of our Caribbean numbers called Sailing. Sailing. I am the way, the king of victory, the king of the victory. Here we go. This one is the faster, a little faster version. It's going to be quick. I am the way, the king of the victory. I am the truth, the Lord of the harmony. I am the light, the light of the world to be. Hosanna, I hold your hand, my friend. Hosanna, I give you strength, my friend. Hosanna, you walk the sea, my friend. Sail to victory, we're on the fast boat. Sailing, 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 sailing in the river, sailing, 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 sailing across the river, sailing. Freedom, freedom, freedom for the life of Jesus. Hosanna, I hold your hand, my friend. I give you strength, my friend. Hosanna to walk the seas, my friend. We're gonna sail the victory. I am the vine, you shall abide in me. I am the river, you shall be cleansed in me. I am the rock, you shall have life in me. Hosanna, I hold your hand, my friend. Hosanna, I give you strength, my friend. Hosanna, to walk the sea, my friend. We're gonna sail to victory. Sailing, 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 sailing across the river, sailing. Sailing, 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 sailing across the river, sailing. Freedom, sister, freedom, brother, freedom in the life of Jesus. Hosanna, I hold your hand, my friend. Hosanna to walk the sea, my friend. We're gonna sail the victory. I am your God, rising victory. I am your brother in flesh with me. I am your Savior, dying on Calvary. Hosanna, you defend, my friend. Hosanna, I give you strength, my friend. To walk to see, my friend, we're gonna sail the victory. A sailing, 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 sailing across the river, sailing, 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 sailing across the river, sailing. Freedom, freedom, brother, freedom in the life of Jesus. Hosanna, I hold your hand, my friend. I give you strength, my friend. To walk the sea, my friend, we're gonna sail to victory.
about you, but I felt I was on a jet ski for that one. <laughs> that was more of a jet ski, sea scale, uh, sea ski sail. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you give the holy law to your people so that it will always be near us and our children. Through our Lord Jesus, who has fulfilled the law in every way, grant that we may love you with heart, soul, strength, and mind, and our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. You may have a seat for the reading of the word. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. The first lesson today is from the book of Psalms 25, chapter 25, 1 through 5 and 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. This is the word of the Lord. Beautiful. Thank you. And lesson number two. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is Amen. good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our second lesson for this morning is from the Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it's bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehend the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. God. Segunda lectura, tomada del libro de Colosenses, capítulo 1, versículo del 3 al 8. Siempre que oramos por ustedes, damos gracias a Dios, el Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, pues hemos recibido noticias de su fe en Cristo Jesús y del amor que tienen por tantos los santos a causa de la esperanza reservada para ustedes en el cielo. De esa esperanza ya han sabido por la palabra de verdad, que es el Evangelio que ha llegado hasta ustedes. Este Evangelio está dando fruto y creciendo en todo el mundo, como también ha sucedido entre ustedes desde el día en que supieron de la gracia de Dios y la comprendieron plenamente. Así lo aprendieron de Efa, Epafras, nuestro querido colabor colaborador y fiel servidor de Cristo, para el bien de ustedes. Fue Él quien nos contó del amor que tienen en el Espíritu. Esta es palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Muchísimas gracias, Yolanda. Y continuamos. Uh, we continue as we rise. Oops. Uh, got all, all too much bilingual. We're going to get up. We're going to sing Halle, Halle, Halle with the offbeat clapping, as you all know. Halle, Halle, Halle. 
note, please. Okay, that's right. Uh, hold on. I want to do just the clapping. One, two, three, four. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, halle, halle. Hallelujah, halle, halle, halle. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Luke, chapter 10, beginning in the 25th verse. Glory, Glory to you, to O Lord. Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here we go one more time. One, two, three, four. Halle, halle, halle. Hallelujah. Halle, halle, halle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A mixed beat. I like mixed beat. It was sort of a mixed beat. You may have a seat. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. All who are gathered here today in person, all of you who might be watching from somewhere else. And I'll say the other thing, all of you who will watch this some other time, like tonight or Tuesday or whenever it is that people tune in, uh, on FaceTime and uh, Facebook and on YouTube, people watch us throughout the course of the week. So the message doesn't care what day of the week it is, does it? The message is here for all time. I'm going to turn off, put the fan only on. Hold on. Because the top of my head is getting cold. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Okay. Today I want to speak with you about the parable of the Good Samaritan and what I'm going to do is three parts. First part is just to go through this story with you uh, because to know the facts or the way the story is told and why and what happened is very important. Because the second part is how does this apply to you? How does this parable of Jesus, how does this interaction that Jesus had apply to you and to me? And the third part is going to be, what's this story really all about? So we'll go with three parts here. The first part is this. Jesus was always being tested as a teacher. You know, that's a, it's a good thing. 
If you have a professor, you want to make sure the professor knows what the professor is talking about. You don't just take automatically what the person says, you test it, you check it, you make sure it's real. And, and so there could be a good motive, right? But there's also could be a negative motive that the, the, the person is testing you so that they can expose you and, and make trouble for you. This has happened to me. Uh, people can test you and try you and say, and now we're going to throw you under the bus. So this, te this lawyer, this, this person that came up to Jesus may have had that motive. It's possible. We can't say for sure because Jesus put him right in his place. Uh, and he says, what do you have to do to fulfill the law? And Jesus says, the he's and the he's in this text kind of get confusing. So Jesus said, what do you think? Jesus does a good, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I will, a good Jewish thing. He answers a question with a question. Answer a question with a question. What do you think? And the guy says, well, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. He said, good answer. And now Jesus, Jesus says, good answer. Now the man says, to try to push Jesus here, he says, and, and well, what was the last part was, and love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, then the man says, who's my neighbor? Who are you talking about? And here is where it gets very interesting because Jesus said, maybe you need to rethink who your neighbor is. Maybe there needs to be a reboot as to who God thinks a neighbor really is. Maybe we need to understand at a deeper level who our enemies and our friends are in the context of God's eternal love. So he tells this story, right? And the story begins with a man going up, up, what does it say? Which direction was the man going here? The man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay. How many of you have been to the Holy Land? Raise your hand, Judy. And Okay, four, three or four people. Very good. So there's only one direction to go from Jerusalem to Jericho. Down. Jerusalem is 4,000 feet above sea level. Jericho is about 600 feet below sea level. It's like a hole in the ground there. So, so when you go down that road, and I've taken the road, it's bad today. Imagine what it was like when it went back then. It was a twist. It's a twisty, turny, this kind of thing, back and forth and up and down, and mostly down. And around those curves, around those little bends, would be where the robbers would hang, hang out and they would just waylay you on that road. Uh, I'll just break in and say, are there any places like that in New York City? <laughs> Walking up the King's Highway. Okay, you could name a hundred of those streets here, right? Right off the top of your head. And some of them might even be right around here. Uh, tough places, like I would not go there after dark. I would not go there at noon. I wouldn't go there at all. That's that place. So around that bend, this man runs into his problem, Jesus said. He tells the story. And he gets waylaid and the robbers beat him and leave him for dead. Now the lawyer was a, a uh, probably a Pharisee or a Sadducee, you know, one of the leaders, religious leaders. So Jesus now says, the first guy that passes by, go, comes up to him, is a priest. A priest. And the priest immediately helps him because that's what priests do, right? No. He passes by on the other side of the road. Say, wait a minute, I don't have time for, who knows what he said. I'm not doing it. Next guy is a Levite. A Levite would be a deacon in today's world. All right? Somebody who worked in the temple but was not ordained. So we have a vicar and a deacon. And I'll use them as the example. Both of these guys see the man laying in the side of the road, beaten and bloody, and walk right past him. What shame on you? What do you even think? What's wrong with them? You know? <laughs> the third, now, the third person comes past. And the third person is the enemy, the religious enemy of the Jews. The third person is a Samaritan. Which means what happened way in the way back time 
was when the kingdom of Israel was taken off into captivity. The, in the olden days, the Assyrians who ran the world then would bring in other people to take the place of the people they carried off. So, this is not unlike something that's happening today, by the way, over in uh, Ukraine. They would not only conquer the place, they would fill it up with other people. So that when these, if they ever let the, the, the captives go, when they came home, somebody else was living in their house and had claimed it as their own. So those were the Samaritans. They were the people that were brought in from wherever, and those people came, uh, who, had, who were released slaves from some other time, and they lived there, and they brought their religious practices, and they brought their ways with them. And guess who hated them? The Israelites, the Jews, because they had taken their land and were living on it as though it was their own. And they were living right there among them. So, so the, the, the truth is, to a Jewish believer at that time in God, there were no good Samaritans. They were all bad. They were all the other guys. They were the people who shouldn't even be here. They were people who need to go back where they came from, in the word. You hear what I'm saying to you now? Go back where you came from, you're not welcome. That man stops and helps this Jewish guy who's beaten and bloodied, carries him down to another place, fixes him up and, and gives something to an innkeeper and says, gives some money, puts his credit card out there with the CV, you know, so his information is now public and says any problems and any, if it costs any more, I'll be back, I'll pay you the extra. Now, think about this story. Jesus says, which one of those three to this Jewish leader was the one who was actually justified? Which was the good one? And what does the guy have to say? Well, the one who showed mercy. The one who was there when he was needed the most. The one who didn't ask for anything in return, but instead gave of himself. And what does Jesus say? <laughs> it's one of the great passages in the Bible. Go and do thou likewise. <laughs> I want you to be the Samaritan. <laughs> you know, it would be, and I, I'll now turn it, uh, it would be as though the end of this sermon today from me would be, I want you all to go and be a good Muslim. How would you feel if I said that? See, you would say, what? You're on the wrong side of history here, man. You're on the wrong side of theology. We have a good pastor and vicar and deacon over here. Sure, they forgot to help him out, but those are our people. And meanwhile, the Muslim guy takes care of him, and I'm supposed to be like him. Jesus says to us, go and do thou likewise. It's not about faith. It's about practice. It's about action. It's about faith. It's about understanding your faith maybe in a little better and different way. That God desires mercy in that sacrifice. That God desires something from the heart. Have you ever received something from a good Samaritan? Has somebody been a good Samaritan to you? Ever happened to you? Did you care where that person came from? You say, I can't accept that from you because, you know, you're not one of our tribe. You're not, if you're not Lutheran, don't help me. You're not going to say that. <laughs> you're going to say, thank you for the help, right? So, so yesterday, June, did somebody help you at the ball game? Yeah, right? And some guy, because she was out in the hot sun, couldn't take it anymore, and what? The security guard took her into the stadium, which he's, what, not supposed to do, and gave her a seat and helped her out. Well, I had a little accident here on uh, Thursday. I didn't have an accident. My car was hit by a guy when I wasn't in it. And I was, you know, a little upset and anxious about that situation because it turned out I couldn't drive the car anymore. My sacred car is now somewhere else. And uh, all of a sudden, people came out in the street and they, they helped me out. You know, I didn't ask who they were, why they were there. They just said, thank you. Thank you for, th hey, for doing the thing I didn't do. Call the police. 
uh, thank you for this, this, and this. This is the way it works. A good Samaritan is somebody who's there when, it's, when the need is real. Uh, and, and we're not going to ask about religious affiliation or anything else. On the other hand, should we not be in the lead as good Samaritans? We who already heard this story should be the first ones to say, let me help spontaneously. See, you can't make somebody have that heart. You can't, I can't tell you you have to be that way. That comes from you. The instinctive nature of a New York situation is, I got to get out of here. That's an instinctive reaction from people in this city to difficulty. Because the next guy might have a gun, because this and that might happen to me, because now I'm gonna, something else will happen. And so there, that's an instinctive re reaction. A better instinctive reaction is, how can I help this situation right now while it's happening? And that's what the Good Samaritan did. He just took it right then and gave mercy, the Bible said. So we, who have understood mercy in a certain way, might, might want to go to this level of this story. Where have you received mercy? You have received mercy at the mercy seat. We have received mercy from the most merciful one of all. We have, when we were beaten and bloodied, when we were down low, when we were out of options, when we were anxious and depressed and lost, who came there? Who came to your aid? See, Jesus is the Good Samaritan. Jesus is the one who would not allow anyone to pass by. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, right? And, we, and I say to you, Jesus cannot and will not ever pass you by. If you have been in that deep, deep situation and trouble, God will always send His Son uh, to rescue you. God has always sent His Son to rescue you. And how can we do anything more or less than respond in the same way as Jesus has to us? What He has done for me, I will do for others. There's many stories in the Bible like this. So the one name that was mentioned today in the second lesson is Epaphras. So Epaphras was a man, was a beautiful man, and he was so good at what he did that when Paul was in prison, they sent Epaphras over to visit and take care of him. Because he was that natural guy. He would take care. And what happened? In life, he got sick. And somebody had to take care of him. So it, 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 it can turn just like that. You can be a caregiver, and then what do you need to be? A care receiver. And God says to us today, be the good Samaritan and watch how there is a Samaritan there for you. When you've received mercy, don't you want to give it back? You know, more mercy I get, the more I want to give back to others because I realize what a wonderful thing it was that was somebody was there for me when I needed them the most. And somebody is always there for me in our Lord Jesus. So today, this parable, does it apply to us today? all over the place every day every day find a way and and uh, we should really do more of that in this church is simply to share the experiences we've had either of receiving care or of being able to be there for somebody just when they needed it the most all of that comes directly from God and it goes directly to God you notice in the text it says he just happened to be passing by they happen to be. It's always happening. You know, just, by the way, as I was walking down the street, you know, just like that, and this happened just like that. This is where God calls us to be agents of his mercy. As life happens right then. So, be blessed, be joyful, uh, be surrounded by mercy, and be people who surround others with mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to turn the air conditioning back on. We've figured out a way to do this now. Congregation, please stand. Let's turn to page six of our bulletins. We're going to reaffirm our Christian faith by the words of the Nicene Creed. We begin. I, I believe in one God, God Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, begotten of God, light of light, very God, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I have not only one baptism for the remission of sins, but I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Let's come forward with the prayers, please. You may have a seat. Prayer time at St. Peter's. And we are always grateful for that opportunity here. There's much going on. Oh, nice pen. Somebody left a nice pen up here. Uh, it's mine now. Once it's here, it's mine. So, for uh, those remembering Joycelyn, that's Mo Mohan, Donald and Rob from Brenda, and then prayers, those are prayers for uh, comfort. For Norman, for those who are sick, Norman, Camden's uncle Rashawn, Marie Cristello, Andrew Ryan, uh, Mohan and family, Anne and family, for Leela and family, Missy, that's Missy Donraj and family, for healing, for Sevi, Elvis, kids, Sonia and family, for guidance, Yvonne and Francis, guidance and healing, uh, Denver Bailey, my kids and grandkids. For family of Anik and Algin. For Aliyah, Jeremiah, Shaina, Makita, and Chance. Uh, these are for other prayers. For Anna Fung and Camille Fung for guidance and blessings. Guidance and healing for the Jewsbury and Green families. For Brenda and family, Gloria and family. Carol and Gillette and family for guidance, the Ryan and Isley families for guidance and thanksgiving, and then for uh, guidance for the Towler Bascom Consortium, uh, for guidance and continued blessing for the Juner family, for prayers and guidance for Audrey and Susan and Karen, their families, for Cross and Kelly, Kemp and Latham families. And that's, now we're going to go to some birthday. Donald's birthday today in heaven from Brenda. For Nadine Rao's birthday in Germany. For Malika Rao, first birthday in Germany. It's probably her first birthday period, but it's in Germany. For Johannes Lue, first birthday in Germany. We have a lot of Germans here in this thing. I see. They're born one day apart. Are they twins? No, oh, they're not from the same. Okay. It's a long time to wait if they're twins. Wow. That's a good family there. Well, give them our love all the way over there. Now we're going to open it up to anybody from here. And then we'll receive some online uh, prayers as well. Okay, any others from here? Wilmer. Matthew's birthday? When is that? Next Sunday, Matthew, nine years old. Give him a hand now. We give him an advance blessing. Beautiful, thank you. Happy birthday in advance. Audrey, Diane Giordano, Diane Miller, and uh, Pam Cole, and Lillian, who's home. These are some of our shut-ins, yes. Gita and the Chandradats. 
Darian Hines, who's unable to be with us, and we keep her uh, in strong prayer. And Vivi's birthday on Saturday, the 16th, next Saturday, okay? Gita and the Chanderdots. Sounds like a musical group. Yeah. Annette Evanson, right there, the beautiful blonde Annette Evanson. 37 years old. Thank you, Annette. Actually, maybe that's about right. What's 37 times 2? Uh, <laughs> well, I do that to myself. You know, I'm 38, so figure it out. Twyla? David what? What happened? Oh, he lost a dear friend. Okay. For David and for David's friend, a uh, prayer for condolence, and then for David as he mourns his loss. Steve. Eddie and Velma. Continued healing, especially for Velma, but Eddie is a strong caregiver there too. Okay, anything else to bring forward from online? And no. Online is okay? All right, we'll take it as it's okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Ready to pray? Uh, all right. Holy and heavenly God, we come before your throne of grace this morning. We're here humbly. We're here as your servants. We seek to follow your lead, and we thank you with grateful hearts for the fact that we have received our Good Samaritan, our mercy giver in our Lord Jesus. We thank you for all the ways in which we, on a daily basis, understand your mercy anew. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is that your faithfulness, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for that right at the top today. Thank you for giving us mercy in your Son. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, now for those mourning the loss of loved ones, for those who are torn at this time and need consolation. We ask, Father, that in the middle of our grief we might seek your face, that when we lose those whom we love, we might understand that in your way, at some time, we will meet again because we will be in heaven's halls together. But we ask, Father, that you would give those folks who are mourning right now the comfort of people who will surround them with love and care and compassion and hear them and listen to them. Be with us as we mourn and may we find comfort, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those sick and suffering in any way, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, for all the many difficulties of life, Father. We come before you today and we ask that the great healer, our Lord Jesus, might enter their hearts that doctors and nurses and caregivers might be given exactly the tools that they need to bring that physical, mental, and emotional healing to bear. But we ask that we, as the family of faith, might be there for one another to exhibit spiritual care and bring spiritual healing. Allow those for whom we pray today to be surrounded by your love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Father, now for prayers of thanksgiving for the gift of life. What a wonderful thing it is to celebrate birthdays. We ask that those who are celebrating during this week might be received from your abundant uh, bless from a, from your abundant hand the blessings that they need in the year that is to come in their lives. That they may reflect on where they've been, that they may see where they're headed, and know that it's all because of your magnificent glory. Lord, in your mercy. We pray now for uh, many family members that we have and for our church family that in this summer season we might continue to be together with one another, we might continue to enjoy one another's presence and find ways in love to serve one another and to serve those around us. May we be caregivers, may we be mercy extenders, may this church lift up the light of Jesus wherever we are. Lord, in your mercy. And now we pray for our world, a world in tumult, a world in pain, a world that often 
is without God. And we ask for wisdom for world leaders that you shower down from on high. May the Prince of Peace rule the world. And may his peace be sh shown throughout the many, many countries of this world in acts of not only love and kindness, but of mercy and justice. That where there is injustice and violence, that they might be banished and that you might replace that with a, a spirit of peace. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue now as we bring our offerings. So here we're going to do a one semi-a cappella version of this song before we start playing it. And then you can begin taking the offering. That's good. This is called Come, Let Us... What is it? Boy, I can't find it, of course. Now that I need it. Come, Let Us Eat. Come, that's the sea. Oh, hi, okay. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Come, let us eat, for now the feast is spread. Our Lord's body let us take together. Our Lord's body let us take together. You hear it? It's an African beat. It'll have a Caribbean backbeat. Ba, 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 ba. And as the offering plates come forward, we will rise. You can start seated, but we will rise at the end. Here we go. Come, let us eat. There'll be a practice verse at the beginning. Practice verse. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may establish in us a living faith and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do, do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Amen. And you can hold hands as appropriate and we'll sing our song of unity, which is the Lord's Prayer. share with one another now the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you. Peace in, peace out. A couple little more hugs and touches can be done now. The next version has not yet hit us. Amen. And as you finish, you may have a seat. We're going to continue with Holy Communion. Two songs during the meal. When the storms of right life are raging, stand by me. And that speaks to the deal that God is always distributing his mercy in the midst of anything. And then all the Jesus I surrender if we need it. And uh, we will come in the normal way that we always do here from this side to this side. Receive, take back, and then share the meal together at the end. Come for the feast is prepared.
Take indeed of the body of Christ. It is given for you. And take and drink of the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. May this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, keep you strong in the true faith. Unto everlasting life, depart in peace. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the benediction of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat for a couple of announcements. First of all, good to see you all here, and I'm going to give a little shout out to people who are watching online because you online do not get to eat here today. No. You missed out. These people here are allowed to eat in the parish hall right now. Yes, and what are we going to have? What's on the menu? Well, we have hot coffee for those who need hot coffee. We also have iced tea and iced beverages for those who like cold drinks. We have then, from the hand of Simone, we have, I believe, I'm going to say this wrong, a tray of mac and cheese. Is that a correct answer? Yes, it is. And we also have, under the hot food, a tray of lo mein. Oh, oh I see what happened. You can see people saying, I should have come today. I should have been there. Yes, you should have. And uh, anyway, that goes on and on. So next Sunday, we have somebody lined up already, right? So we have people lined up throughout the summer season. 
just again to st stick it to those people who are not here, our, our whole upper level now is tastefully air conditioned. That's right. We have the central air in the parish hall. So no matter how hot and muggy it may be, you can have your meal in comfort right there in the parish hall. Thank, let's give a big thanks to Simone and Malcolm for today. That's right. Thank you. And of course to David and Gita and the, and the fellowship team who have prepared now that we're covered for the rest of the summer. Uh, Twyla, how is your summer camp going? There are enrollments available. It's called an enrichment camp, am I right? And vouchers for people who, who uh, could not afford to pay the tuition. They're now going to take the vouchers, so that's another good thing. Give a hand to Twyla. That's a big effort. She's happy. She's definitely, it's a, it's a challenge, you know, to do these things in the city of New York, but it's also a wonderful blessing. So thank you, Twyla, for taking it on. Now we're going to go to baseball. So Thursday night, a number of us went uh, from St. Peter's along with a friend of ours, Bill Nelson, out in Long Island, who gave us free tickets to the game to sit well up into the Bob Euchre, the nosebleed seats, uh, and watch, watch the Mets crush the opponent. Yes. And then this Friday... This Friday, this very Friday, we're going, for this tiny amount of money, we're going to the Brooklyn Cyclones game. Now, Judy, would you tell us the timing and all of that stuff? It's a baseball game. The game's, wait a minute, you're going to have to do this because the online friends here. Come on down. It's okay. They need to, they need to hear, hear it from your mouth. Some people, you know, could get confused about which day this game was on. <laughs> that could happen. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Uh, the, the game is this Friday. It is a giveaway game and it is also fireworks. Uh, and I have, some of you have asked for tickets, uh, and I have given to those also last week. So hopefully everybody has that. I do have, I have to ask Henry, you're going to take four. Okay, I have then uh, four unclaimed tickets. So if anybody else wants to go, uh, Brenda, okay. Uh, so basically it's uh, Coney Island, so good luck getting there. No, I mean, it's, <laughs> depending on where you live. It's a challenge, but it's fun, uh, and it's uh, it's it's fun to see because you're right. You see all of the rides and everything from the station. So, uh, see me after if you want. Yeah, there's a parking lot right next door. So. Parking lot right there. If you're coming by public transit, you know there's a train that drops you right there near the the stadium as well. Uh, but it's a good game, and it's not a long game because they only play seven innings in the minor leagues. So, right? And then there's fireworks. And you're gonna get a giveaway. They might give you a hat, they might give you, they're not gonna give you a hat. They might give us a hat, I might get a hat anyway. Those are the little B Brooklyn things. Anyway, there's 30 of you going already, if somebody needs. I think you could actually, we could, well, see Judy after. That's the, uh, that, let's leave it there. Let's leave the bus right there. We're working on other events for the summer. Uh, this week, I believe, is the week the kitchen renovation starts. They're already renovating outside on Hale Avenue, so there'll be a lot going on during the week. But we have the upper level all to ourselves. And then uh, Jose is gone this week. He's preaching up in Bronxville, I believe, today. Yeah? And Henry will be on the road next week. Oh, Henry is here next. Okay. Henry will be right here next Sunday. I got to hit the road. Why don't I get to hit the road? I'm, a, I'm the home game here. All right. And throughout the summer, there'll be a lot of mixing and matching like that. Uh, but this is a great opportunity for our, our vicars, our interns, to actually experience other churches and for other churches to hear uh, them preach and bring the Word of God. 
So we give a, a shout out to them. In a couple of weeks, there is a, a convention of the Atlantic District, uh, which I used to be in charge of, and uh, I'm going there. It's in Albany. And the reason for that is our old place for many, for a century, which was Concordia College, is no longer part of our our denomination. It's now a Catholic school, so we can't we we don't have the use of that. So we're going all the way up the throughway to Albany for a one-day convention. Uh, I am so far the only voting delegate from this church. So if somebody really needs a getaway day, uh, let me know about that. Uh, Anyway, that's next week, not this week. So let's go. Are we ready to go to the parish hall? That food is waiting. Come on. Sonia. I'm not sure. Oh, the youth gathering. Okay, this week there's a youth gathering of all of the kids uh, from around the country. There's four or five groups from our district only, not that many. Uh, but they're down there, including a couple groups from Brooklyn. So they're down. We'll keep them in our prayers, too. And this Wednesday is Eat, Talk, Pray. Eat, Talk, Pray this Wednesday. And then there's a thought about having Eat, Talk, Pray move to a, a different uh, day. It's still open. and uh, It's an open group. So if you want to come over here, you come at 6 just to talk, eat, and pray. But it's a very good group in terms of, Stacy is here, in terms of dealing with our human feelings and how we can grow in the Lord and grow with one another. And we share appropriately at that meeting. Brenda? Brenda's a testimony here. Brenda's saying, I love that group, I love that group. And uh, Brenda is, is, is saying what I think the whole group feels. It's been a blessing. So we get together at 6, and then this Wednesday evening is 7.15. Uh, and this week there will be healing oil. So if you come, you will also receive the blessing of the oil, uh, healing oil, during that service. We do that once a month on Wednesday. Okay? I think I'm good. Are you good? good. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go. And our final song is, We Shall Overcome. It's a song about justice and mercy. We rise to sing.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.